We're here at Roaches Point Beach, which is to the east of Cork City. It's a fantastic day. And the reason we're here is we're talking about rocky shore ecology. My, my name is Kian Gill. I'm a scientist sometimes and a, a science educator other times. Now, this is a fantastic example of a rocky shore and they're really interesting places to look at all the different living things that you find because of the amount of diversity and because of the really, really interesting adaptations that all the living things here have. Now, every living thing on Earth is adapted perfectly to be where it is. So that means that the shape of its body and the, the biology of it and also the way it behaves is perfectly fitted to the place where it lives. Now, a rocky shore, like the one just behind me, is a particularly difficult place for a living thing to, to survive. We don't really think about this. For us humans, we think they're lovely, nice, happy, friendly places to go and visit. But if you were to live here all the time, just think about the incredible changes that you have to live with. So, twice a day, the water comes in, the tide comes in, and you have to deal with living underwater. You have to deal with high levels of salt all around you because, of course, the ocean is salty. You have to deal with massive changes of temperature and then twice a day the water comes back out again so depending on where you are on the beach maybe you have to now you have to deal with being in the air now you have to deal with the sun maybe battering from the rocks and from the waves and the action of the waves you have two very very different styles of life that you have to be able to cope with when you live on the rocky shore and today we're going to be looking at some different living things plants animals and other uh, and examining exactly how they fit into their environment here and how they survive all these hardships. Uh, close to the top of the shore, we have an area that we call the supralittoral zone. That's like its scientific name, but it has a more fun name. We also call it the splash zone. And we call it that because this area doesn't get submerged by water very often, maybe only during a very high tide or maybe during a really big storm. And you can recognize this zone, the splash zone, uh, because of the particular things that live here. So for example, you see the rocks are covered in uh, sometimes brightly colored things and sometimes very dark colored things. And they're actually a, a, an organism called lichen, which is really two different things that live together. There is a fungus, kind of like the mushrooms that we're all familiar with, and an algae, which is the kind of the green stuff that you'll see growing around the rocks here. When they live together, they help each other out. The fungus provides the kind of a, the, the hard body that we see and the lichen, and the algae provides the photosynthesis. That means that they're able to make their own food from sunlight, just like plants do. We're in the middle of the beach. This is probably the area where the most change happens because if you're a creature that lives here, you have to deal with being completely submerged by water and then being totally out in the open uh, twice a day, uh, most of the time. So these organisms have to be very flexible. They have to be able to deal with these really intense changes very frequently. What we have here, is an example of a, an animal that we find living in a place like this in the middle of the beach. These are uh, limpets. Now limpets are mollusks, so they're actually closely related to the kind of snails and slugs that you might recognize from your own garden. And if you could see them uh, underneath their shell, they're actually, they look quite similar. They're called gastropod mollusks, and that's a scientific word. Literally it means stomach foot. And if you could see them, that's pretty much what they look like. They're just a big stomach with a big flat, gooey, squishy foot at the end of it. The rock I'm on is covered in barnacles. That's another good uh, sign that we're clearly in the mid shore uh, because these are animals also that are adapted to being in the water and out of the water for different times of the day. It's, it's a really good idea if you are uh, adapted to deal with these changes to be able to stick yourself onto a rock just like the barnacles do and to close up everything about your body so that you can keep any water in, that you need inside you and that you can keep yourself safe from any predators that might be patrolling these rocks when the water is out as well. So periwinkles are another kind of, of essentially snail-like boneless animal that we'll find on the rocky shore and one of their adaptations to being able to live in the middle of the shore is the fact that they can close a door on their shell. So they have a thing called an operculum which basically functions like a door, allows them to shut up shop here, keep the water inside and protect them against all the big changes that are happening, the changes in the levels of salt, levels of water and levels of air. So here we have a sea anemone. Now its tentacles are not out right now, it's kind of set up uh, folded up shop right now so but when the water comes out and it's active um, it's 
a little squashy animal and you'll see that lots of little fronds or tentacles will come out and they actually have special stinging cells inside them, a little bit like the cells that a jellyfish has that it uses if it unfortunately stings you. But it uses them to grab uh, moving animals that go past and then sting it and uh, cause it to become a little bit dopey and a little bit uh, sick and then it'll pull them it'll pull the food into its own mouth and inside here is basically a sack like stomach which only has one opening and one exit so they're quite simple animals compared to us one of the things that makes seaweeds different to plants is that uh, they can live in places where plants can't because they don't have roots and therefore they don't need any kind of soft soil to to burrow into instead of roots what they often have it's a thing that we call a hold fast which is able to attach itself to hard rock surfaces meaning that they can live here and in places even where plants can't. So as we get closer towards the, the bottom of the shore, the, the sublittoral zone we sometimes call it, we start to see that the species change again. So one sign that we're getting closer to that end is this species of seaweed here and it's called saw rack, like a saw that you would use to cut something. And you can see why it's got these very pointed jagged edges um, on, on the side of it here that give it its name. So rock pools are great habitats to find living things, though it can sometimes be a bit of a challenge to get them out. Uh, there are often shrimp and small invertebrates like those that live in here, but as soon as they uh, see any movement in the water, they'll find a nice, safe, dark place to hide and uh, not come out. We can sometimes tell that there's living things in here if we see little bubbles coming up uh, or other evidence of movement in the water. Now, uh, there are different kinds of rock pools, some of the ones towards the top of the shore um, they are not getting their water changed as often and if they're high enough then that means that eventually they'll start to lose some of their salt content so the animals that live in them have got to be able to tolerate this whereas the ones uh, lower down on the shore the, the water is being replaced from the ocean more frequently so they tend to be quite similar to the ocean itself and therefore the animals that live there uh, are not as tolerant of changes in the level of salt. So if you're interested in nature, the seashore is, is a really, really easy place to get started. It's a really easy place to find uh, lots of different living things. There's a great variety of things here. All you have to do is take the time to stop, look and lift things up. Almost under every single stone you'll find a vast a variety of different things growing, living together and it really helps to impress upon you the, the sheer variety and connectedness of all the living things that we have in this country.